we going on a field trip, boys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! I love the pick a pull. Yeah, I don't think you guys know what I'm capable of. <laughs> need to play all one of these. This is a dangerous place for me. I've already lost half the crew. I know. I just heard someone say, is that a 2J? And then just can bounce. This is like one of my favorite cars of all time. No, it's basically a supercar. It's mid-engine. Welcome back, another episode of Garage Garage, the Gymkhana Grid Special. We're back at it with my 86. Vinny, as usual, is moving at a rate that really upsets me and makes me question my entire life. Basically, all I've done is get this thing on the lift and open up a lot of packages. First up today is going to be figuring out the rear end situation. Not a Toyota guy, I didn't really know this when I bought this, but apparently, Things like taillights and rear ends are really expensive. And this is a like non-LSD SR5 rear end. There is a GTS rear end, but apparently that is very expensive. Thank you, Jameson. And very unattainable. So Jameson's like the Toyota guy in the crew, like Hurt tries to be, but how many Toyotas do you own? Uh, right now? Yeah. Like nine. Nine. <laughs> yeah. Damn, you have more Toyotas than I have Audis. Yeah, no. I think he has the real problem. You got an old car with steel beams, whether they're seven inch, like this, or this, or this. Or maybe you got a couple of these bad boys. Maybe you just have one. Either way, this four by six steel beam rectangle, still pretty crappy lighting. Our friends at Morimoto have worked with Holly to come up with this, the Retro Bright. A retro looking light with modern tech. They're twice the light output of halogens, low draw, extended life, but they're also compliant, no glare beam pattern. Check the description below for all the sizes, more details, where you can get them. <laughs> yeah. So walk me through like the rear ends in this and kind of like the situation and the problems there. So like the 86, there's two versions of it. So you have an SR5, which is like the base model. Which like is the four man version. Whoa, 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 whoa. easy. <laughs> yeah. We'll use the word attainable okay. model. The attainable model is the SR5. So you can get these for a fairly decent price. And then uh, you have the GTS, which is the more expensive version. So what did the GTS have in it that differentiated? So the GTS 4AG motor. A uh, different rack and pinion. Closer ratio? Yeah, a whole different rear end. And the GTS rear end is it's good, but it's not as strong as the, the amount of power that we should be putting. And it was the LSD in the rear end? Uh, yeah, correct. So, and how much do those go for right now, street price? Nowadays, if yeah, you find a GTS rear end just alone, you're probably looking at like three grand. <laughs> so, three grand for something that's not bulletproof and probably needs to be rebuilt. So, instead, I hit up the guys at Technotoy Tuning and they supplied this, which is a kit to put Ford parts in a Toyota. Does that <laughs> yeah. make you excited? Yeah, yeah, unfortunately, like, the cool thing is people actually adapt stuff to, to do this. If you're a purist, it sucks. Does this look boring? Does interior look boring? Does this acceleration seem boring? If you're just trying to drive and like have fun with the car, then it's awesome. Think about this, like my whole life is either Volkswagen Audis or Fords. So I get to put a Volkswagen engine in the front and a Ford 8.8 rear end, an 8.8 out of an Explorer. I never thought that uh, an Explorer would be what I was stealing parts from. But, but it's a pretty decent rear end and the great thing is there is a lot of options for different differentials so you can use like, I think it's what the hell is it called? Like, I don't know, something track is the Ford diff, which is the factory one and you can rebuild that with like extra shims and that's a pretty good diff or you can get a bunch of other stuff. Obviously you can run lockers, you can run spools, so there's a lot of different options. So this is the setup for it. Basically makes it nice and easy to work with the stock setup. By the way, can we just enjoy for a second? Cut into a beauty package of how nice all this stuff is from T3. You can actually see the torque specs are built on here. Then they have this. Might be a bit overkill. Like before we started filming, it was very obvious that this is me taking a simple project and making it not simple at all anymore. Actually making my car less simple than Vinny's simple 36. This is an equal length four link kit. These actually get mounted inside the car, which means I would lose the rear seat. But as you can see here is four link setup, but this is your big bar. Those are your little tiny bars. What this kit does, it basically runs the bars into the inside of the car so that you have a four link setup that's equal links, which should make it handle a little bit better. I'll be honest, I think we might set it up the current links for right now and then maybe do the rest later. It just seems like a lot of fab work for something I said was supposed to be simple. I mean, it would be cool, 
but how much time do we have? <laughs> yeah, get the engine and everything in first. It could be one of those things that after the first event, maybe we install those later. Always have the option. So anyway, the one thing that they don't give you in the kit is the actual 488. So what does that mean? What are we doing, Jameson? Oh, we're going on a field trip, boys. <laughs> oh yeah. This is everybody's favorite thing, pick and pull day. <laughs> What do we come home with? I love the pick a pole. We haven't been to the pick a pole as a group. Not with this group. I don't think you guys know what I'm capable of. I feel so alive! Well, I think we might have to put a time limit on you because we're going to be there till sundown. <laughs> All right, and then I also am still looking for a trans for this thing, so maybe we'll find a trans. So let's pack our tools and we'll head out. You got anything you're looking for while you're there, Jameson? Uh, yeah, but. A whole rear wall from a Nissan Frontier. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Junkyard Cruiser. Oh, that's space. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not warmed up yet. Here we are, the land of hopes and dreams. Pick your part. What do you got going on here? We got the supply box. Yeah, this is our crate full of all the goodies, mostly an angle grinder. Angle grinder, <laughs> impact, all the breaker bar. Hope you have a hammer in here somewhere. Yeah. Gloves. Yeah. By the way, the best hand cleaner ever made. Let's go. dangerous place for me. I could be here all day. I've already lost half the crew. I know. They all dispersed. Yeah, they all just disappeared. <laughs> I just heard someone say, is that a 2J? And then fucking <laughs> bounced. <laughs> Here's one. This one's like nicely lifted up where we need it. Oh, 2002, it's a good year. Oh wait, this one's independent. We need a solid rear. What? <laughs> I didn't know they came independent. Maybe we need a 2001. I don't know. Oh, dude. What? The dolly pulling this jack <laughs> Oh, that's not sketchy at all. Get me the f out of oh here. <laughs> Yo, by the way, this is like one of my favorite cars of all time. The premium? No, it's basically a supercar. It's mid engine. What the f is she talking about? You can get it in all wheel drive or it comes in rear wheel drive. And supercharged. And it comes supercharged. The motors are behind the seat in these. Is it real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, mid engine. It's basically a supercar. Eddie Bauer edition. Apparently that has the better definite. Yeah, I wonder if those are super stuck on there. Did you bring a torch? Yeah, but we're not allowed to use it. There's another explorer right over there. The stamping here. This says it's a 388. I think you gotta look up the code. It tells you the gear ratio? Yeah. Or L7? L73. L7 L7 three. Slip. Three, three, seven, three. That's it. That's what we want. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> this is the Ford Sorry, Explorer right Ranger Bronco axle code. So you look for the tag on the axle and it'll tell you what gear ratio and what's inside. So L73, limited slip, three point. Yep, that's what we want. Because I did a bunch of math, which we'll cut to. Figured we did all the gearing because you can go to like Tremax page or someone like that and do all the math. Yo, what? Yeah, what's a boom tube? <laughs> it's broken. I tried. Well, it was. Break the uh, drive shaft loose and uh, 
I think we're ready to go. Uh, we also need to unhook the uh, e-brake. You do that on your side? Yeah, I did it on mine. All right, I usually show up with like a crescent wrench and like a pry bar, a hammer, and like a hacksaw blade, mount like taped to a, like a bar of soap. <laughs> All, All right, right, now rotate that shit so yeah. you can do the other side. It's good now, you can lock it. That's a first. So you were telling him to move it while it's in neutral? A better force pushing down than pulling up. So we just rotated it, that's all. Could you hand me, let's see. You want another one to touch that? Away? Yeah. There we go. Oh, oh, there we go. Got it. We're gonna get this done and Josh is gonna come back with the actual tool. Use that as a hammer. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it worked! You got it? Yeah. They didn't need it. We had, let's go. Uh, you want to come my way? Yeah, because there's more room that way. Alright. All right. It's all on you. Don't scratch that cart. Oh, bro, don't scratch the rims. <laughs> we got that done like under like 20 minutes. That was not bad at all. Alright. <laughs> I'm gonna these tools up. Well, since we, we did that so quickly, I feel like we deserve a tour of the yard to find some other stuff. Let's start people out. Yeah. Take a shirt. Yeah. Thirty six. Uh, just a compressor. Oh, oh, my bad. What, what is the exhaust? There's a CD double nine transmission in this random ass E90. So sorry if you were the person that stashed it in here, but it's what happens when you sleep. That's automatic. Never mind, it's automatic. <laughs> There's no shifter plate. That's not CD01. <laughs> CD9. I'm telling you, man, someone stashed that shit here. Yeah. The worst thing is, is like my slop can either use E90 trans or CD09. I was like, I'll just get the BMW. It'll be easier to find. We literally stumble on a CD09 in a BMW. Can't find the trans I need anywhere. Yeah. How'd they find it? All right. That's a come up right there, Kyle. Yep. I think the CD01. Which one is it? It could either be the shitty one or the good one. There's no way to tell. Yeah. Unless you had the VIN. But you can check each gear. She run good? So far. There's no grinding on any of the gears. What are the chances of that? Somebody's gonna watch this video and be like, dude. They're gonna come kill us. <laughs> oh, that's been tagged. Is that what it is? Yeah, but you gotta contact either Z1 Motorsports and they'll run the VIN for you, or you can call Nissan and they can tell you. Kick rocks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is there $11 each? <laughs> I will definitely leave those behind. Wow. <laughs> Every little piece you gotta pay for, including the brake lines, which literally don't come off. Ford, uh, Ford. You just told me it's 350. Shout out to Lloyd. Shout out to Lloyd? Yo, shout out to Lloyd. What's up, Melo? Yeah, How much is that? <laughs> we got the Lloyd discount? We got the Lloyd discount, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, successful trip. I don't know. We came for our axle, went home with CD09 that was someone clearly stashed in the back of a BMW. Someone's gonna come back and try to get that tomorrow and be super bummed. Dude, it's like scraping. This thing? Oh. Yeah. oh. <laughs> you got a trans in there. Now the fun part begins. 
All right, so we got the uh, axle here, and we're about to pull off the cover. Let's see if it's actually an LSD. You should have done this <laughs> at the yard. At the yard. The other thing that we didn't do at the yard, which I just did right now, you pull off the breather valve, and you check to see how thick the wall is. And this is the thick boy, so it's like a quarter inch thickness, which is good if you want to cut and shorten them because it gives you a little more room to play with. So anyway, would you have gotten a new one if it wasn't the thick boy? Probably. We got so excited, it was so easy <laughs> yeah, to come out. I also figured if it said it was the 373 LSD, it was the good one, so I was just kind of gambling. Anyway, so pop this bad boy off. Oh yeah, that's the LSD Ooh. setup. Yeah. So there's your clutch packs right in here. Oh, it smells. It smells like shit. Wow, <laughs> that's definitely a Ford Explorer that's been driven like 90 miles an hour on fucking side roads. Yeah. That's this person. Shot it. it definitely sounds like sand when you're spinning it. <laughs> that's good, right? Yeah, that's. Oh, oh it was just there that. There you go. There you go. It was just that. Oh, it sounds yeah, smooth. Move it up. All right, let's drain this out. And see if we can make a. So now what we have to do is we gotta measure that little boy in there. On the 8.8, this is your short side and this is your long side. So normally when people shorten them, they just take it out of the long side and then they make them equal length. And it's just a question of whether or not it pulls the uh, yoke over too far. And by that point, we'll have it jigged up on here and it'll all make sense. All right, so to get the pin out, magnetic pickup tool, check it out. We actually have our own magnetic pickup tools. Voila. And most importantly, it lights up. Oh yeah, that excited Jameson. He was like, oh shit, that's cool. <laughs> That is a big shot. Who shot's bigger? Oh, sorry, buddy. Got a few inches. I count that. I think that's 31 spline, which is what the good jammies are. Let's see. Where do you want to start? Realize I'm worried about really beefy axles in a car that's going to weigh like all of like 2,200 pounds. But once you get past 28, you know it's 31. Yep, 31. Hey, Winners. The yeah. junkyard winners. Hell yeah. Ultimate winners today. Yeah. I guess we might as well pull the diff out too so we can rebuild it. So they sell like a different shim pack here so you can make it a little bit, a little bit more aggressive. This is like a Ford Performance. Um, it's called a True Lock. How, how'd you say it? True Lok. True Lok, L-O-K, True Lok. They probably tore the hell. Before this gets modified at all, we gotta clean it all up. To do that, there we go. So we got this spray nine by Permatex. Let's see what it's made of. Man, keep on f***ing up stuff, man. Brian. Yes, sir. Why do you have a measuring tape out? Because I never actually saw what a 4AG looks like in a 8.6, <laughs> and it's tiny. Yeah. Very small motor. That's like the size of your shoe. No. All right, that's enough disrespect. Wow. To the Get the goddamn shoe off the car. So what are you doing? What are you, yeah, what are what we, are you actually What the hell are you doing? What? The more I look at this, the less I think it's gonna fit. 
Just don't run a hood. No, you need a hood. I, I actually think these cars really only look good with just the original stock clean hood. I don't want a bump or anything like that. Uh, you're probably going to be running a nine inch cowl like you're in a, on a 90 Mustang notchback. You don't know what you're talking about. Like this is just from the bottom of the engine, not even the pan. Okay. That's like 18 inches. But this is not even a pan. Jesus Christ. This is not. I can cut, if it goes to here, it's about 22. Okay, it's not bad. You've got the room there. It's more like where the transmission fits, how far back the bell housing can go before like I have to knock and cave that all out. Oh, okay. I think you're so gonna have to do a lot of hammering on there anyway. I was talking to John and JSP. He was like, if you build this whole vehicle and the engine sits far forward and it ruins how it drives, then you've lost the whole point of a Corolla. That's right. He's like, so don't worry about losing the firewall if you get to retain how the car drives. What's the next steps here, Brian? Where well, are we the going? The next step should be me installing the diff we just picked up, but uh, I'm waiting on parts, always waiting on parts. Waiting on parts. Um, so this is like still far out. Like you guys caught me doing something that's like for like four episodes. The next time I work on the car, we'll get the suspension in, hopefully get the rear end back in, get that all done, and maybe get the car back on the floor. And then hopefully all my parts show up. I sort out a transmission, get all of that done, and get to actually put the engine in. Keyword, hopefully. Hope is for people waiting for parole, so, oh, you know. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> yeah. see y'all next time. Personally, I don't like the way cars sound without mufflers. So, we got some really little mufflers from Tycon. These are titanium, all of it's titanium. That's where JMSN comes in. Have you done a lot of titanium work before? I have not. You <laughs> pretend you know what you're doing and then you just do it. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty much the story of all of us here. Yeah.